everyone has got three things wrong. The number one is I'm not enough. The second one is I'm different, so I can't connect. And the third is I really want something like freedom from depression or success, but it's not available. All of those things come from a feeling of emptiness inside because we're taught, oh, you feel a feeling? Why don't you eat some donuts or go onto eBay and buy it or Amazon or have a drink? And our feelings are the most real thing we have. And we push them down. We find all this stuff to buy or eat or drink or take to keep us, like John Lennon said, comfortably numb. But then the feelings regroup and come back because they've always got a job to do. It ain't going nowhere. But if you go after the fight, if you approach the challenge, you have a much ch better chance of winning. This the fight of your life, baby. Are you hearing me? This the fight of your life. Since we cannot change the circumstances, but we can change ourselves. We can change what we do. Never forget, what comes easy won't last. And the things that last the longest never come easy. And that's the exact reason why the harder you work for something, the greater you feel when you achieve it. It is not going to be easy, my friend. It is not going to be a walk in the park where you can walk and smile all day. There are going to be some dark days. There are going to be some rainy days. There are going to be some sunny days. But at the end of the day, you are above ground and not under it. You have to decide. It's up to you to decide to be happy. It's that simple. It's not about if I had this thing, if I felt this way, if I was with this, there's no if. You are either happy and you decide to be happy right now and appreciate everything you have and have gratitude, or you don't. It's put up or shut up, survive and advance, win or go home. And that's why you spend all those hours grinding. That's why you spend all those hours pushing yourself to the limit. You spend all those hours running. That's why you spend all those hours sacrificing. You spend all those hours sweating. Every day I demand more from myself than anybody else could humanly expect. I'm not competing with somebody else. I'm competing with what I'm capable of. My number one competition is me. It's always you versus you. You gotta be the one to get up every morning, be disciplined, put in the consistent daily hard work because that gains success. No coach, no trainer, no mentor, no boss can do it. You versus you. Show me your character. Remain disciplined, stay strong. When it all seems hopeless, keep plugging away. Nothing can stop you if you don't stop for anything. Don't stop for anything. Never break your discipline. Remain faithful to yourself and your vision. We all have a voice in our head. Some of us are very spiritual, some of us are not, but we all have this voice in you're doing it. This is wrong, don't do that. The more you don't listen to that voice, the further that voice gets away from you. Some people call it the Holy Spirit, some people call it God, some monks, whatever, whatever you call it, it's there. We all have it. It's the right or wrong voice. But the more we don't listen to it, the more that voice goes away. And the only voice you hear is yourself. When the, only, when the only voice you hear is yourself, you're wrong. There's a voice that guides you through life. And sometimes it's guiding you in a direction that you don't want to go, that's usually the right place to go. It's that uncomfortable place. So that voice is always talking to me, but we don't listen to it. I listen to it. And when I start getting anxious, nervous, like I've done, we all know we've done too much because it's telling us I'm getting tired, I'm wearing down. But we, we go, we go, we go. I start talking to my fiance, hey, I'm doing too much. We start now, like, like I did in Hell Week, like I do all the time, the one second decision. It's that decision when your mind starts to get so amped up. Whenever you can't hear yourself think, you gotta slow down. Whenever you're living off the schedule, every day's a schedule, every day's a schedule, you have no time for yourself. When you start, and we all know it, I don't have time for this anymore, I don't have time for that anymore. That's when your mind and your body are saying, think about it. I'm neglecting my fiance, I'm neglecting my disciplines of life, I'm neglecting my reading, my learning, my, my workouts, my, my, my diet. You start neglecting all of that. You neglect one of them. You can, you can neglect all of them. 
long time. It's going to haunt you. When you start seeing that, I have people that haven't been sleep right now. It can only be one of those things to take you off. So I'm, I'm, I'm very aware of my eating, my sleeping, my, my, my disciplines of life. When I start to get too far away from them, it's a hard stop. Because what made me me are the self, not just disciplines, the self-disciplines of life. And those are always in front of you. If you have it, they're always in front of you. So that's, so that's my hard stop. Look yourself in the mirror sometimes and go, you know why I'm not happy? It's because I didn't listen 10 years ago and I got in the wrong career. You know I'm not happy? Because I married the wrong damn person. It wasn't meant to happen. Yes, everything happens for a reason. You made a bad choice, but it didn't have to be that way. And the second you build up pain, and this, by the way, is not my opinion. If you talk to guys like Dr. David Buss, top 10 most cited uh, psychologist in history, Okay, he's one of my main mentors. He told me, I said, do adults change? Like we do all this self-help videos and podcasts. I said, am I wasting my time? He goes, yeah, kind of. <laughs> I said, why? He said, well, after 25, it's very hard to teach old dogs new tricks. By the way, that's why I've changed most of my stuff targets people 18 to 25. That's why I do Snapchat and all that. Cause there's hope for 18 to 25. Years. Now, if you're over 25, before you get depressed, he told me, but I have good news for you, Ty. I said, what? He said, adults learn through massive trauma. So you will learn. You have to let in some trauma into your life. And that's rough, but no pain, no gain. Like if you are 100 pounds overweight and you wanna be able to play basketball, here's my news for you. Everything happened for a reason. You got fat because you ate too much and you didn't exercise. So welcome to the gym. In the first year is gonna be hell, but that pain hopefully will reprogram your brain that every time you wanna eat that nasty thing, go, wait, I don't wanna go through that pain. So I think one of the myths of society is we won't let pain in, we just excuse it all away. Like, no, that was meant to happen. Oh, you wasted 20 years of life married the wrong person in the wrong career? No, it was meant to happen. Where's the people who go, you up, dude. <laughs> you wasted 20 years and you will never get it back. You better go in your room and cry. And the truth is, you only learn as an adult. Unfortunately, most people can only change through massive trouble. Look back over your life and ask yourself, what activities, behaviors, or decisions have been most responsible for my success in life to date? You will probably find that less than 5% of the things that you have said or done have accounted for most of the success you have enjoyed. You may find that it was your unique ability to solve a particular kind of problem or to take advantage of a particular type of opportunity. You may find that your special talent was an interpersonal skill that enabled you to influence and persuade other people at a particular time and place. You may find on analysis that it was an ability to take charge and accept responsibility for accomplishing a particular goal. Whatever has been responsible for your successes in life to date may be a good indication what you should be doing in the future. Analyze your work based on the measure that I call return on energy. Leaders in every field deliberately apply their talents and energies where they can achieve their greatest return on the amount of energy, mental, emotional, and physical, that they invest in any endeavor. They refuse to take on jobs or work in areas where they cannot perform at exceptional levels. They treat themselves as valuable resources and they spend their energies very carefully. One of the questions that you might continually ask yourself is, is this the best possible use of my time and energy? Is what you are doing right now the most valuable thing that you could be doing, given your particular combination of talents and abilities? Often answering this question will help you to see that there is a vast difference between what you are currently doing and what you should be doing if you want to be fulfilling more of your potential. Once you have chosen your ideal job or occupation for this stage of your career, your biggest responsibility is to make the decision to become very good and then to become excellent at what you do. In a lengthy study on successful Americans, the Gallup organization discovered that expertise or being recognized by your peers as one of the very best in your field was one of the essential ingredients for success in American life. We said before 
that that self-confidence comes from positive knowing rather than positive thinking. It is only when you know that you are outstanding in your chosen field that you really feel terrific about yourself and that you enjoy high levels of self, confidence. Men and women who are good at what they do and who know that they are good at what they do are very different from those who are only average. They walk and talk and dress and behave differently. They have an attitude of assurance and certainty about themselves that causes them to stand out in any group. They have a deep down sense of self, worth and self-confidence that is evident to everyone around them. The quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence, no matter what their chosen field.